Howdy folks, uh, this is Sorting Algorithms. I haven't made a video in a while, so I thought I would make something a little fun to get us started. Uh, to, I thought I'd make something a little fun. Uh, I've been playing the game Bully, which I was and still am a big fan of, in spite of everything Rockstar's done over the past couple years. So I'm going to be ranking every single NPC in Bully. Uh, set up the rules ahead of time. I'm only doing their basic costumes. I'm not going to be ranking like their seasonal outfits or their school activities separately. I'm going to be including adults in this because you know, I'm going to be including the teachers and administration of Bullworth as well as uh, any townies. Every, any character that has a name, they get to appear in this. I'm going to try this again. Howdy folks, uh, this is Sorting Algorithms. I know I haven't made a video in a little while, so I thought I'd make something fun. Uh, I've been playing the game Bully recently, and one of the things that makes it really interesting compared to just about everything else Rockstar has made, and honestly what most of its peers have done, is they all have names, they have schedules, they have jobs, uh, they have relationships with Jimmy that change based on his, you know, how he's been, and where you are in the storyline, and your relationship with their factions. It's really special and unique, and I really enjoy it, so I thought I would pay tribute to that by uh, reviewing Viewing every single NPC in the game. I'm just going to set up a head here. I'm only doing their basic costumes. I'm not going to be doing holiday or unique ones like uh, like uh, gym class or whatever. It's just going to be every NPC in their basic outfit. Also, I'm going to be reviewing the teachers and administration of Bullworth and the townies. Uh, uh, the only, uh, so, uh, <laughs> uh, all right. So here we go. Let's get this started. Let's uh, let's get to meet the people, the good good people of Bullworth. Alright, first off, we have Zoe. I like Zoe. She looks like one of the girls that would want to be friends with me because she wanted a gay bestie, and the fact that I wasn't gay didn't really matter. Uh, I love her outfit. One of the running things throughout this, like in real life, is the teenagers pushing the dress code to the absolute limit, and she is a perfect example of that. Really tall boots, the arm socks, uh, the top button undone. Very, very cool. I would definitely be friends with Zoe if she let me. Alright, next up we have Beatrice, the love interest from the Nerd Click. Uh, one of my favorite things about this game is the way that it's kind of unstuck in time. It came out in 2006, but the nerds feel straight out of, like, Revenge of the Nerds. The very 80s, they play arcade games, uh, you know, they play Dungeons and Dragons. The internet doesn't seem to exist in this world, uh, same with cell phones. And Beatrice is, like, a very cool version of that. She feels like some sort of, like, I don't know, she feels like she would be one of Blossom's friends or something. Very cool, very nice, definitely a likable character, and definitely a nice likable character. Alright, next on the nerd crew, it's Algerdon, also known as Algy. Algy is really annoying in a way that is completely true to life, so I have a hard time hating him. The decision to have his fly comically unzipped is a strong one. I kind of like that it shows off like what a dipshit he is, but at the same time, like spending an entire game looking at this guy's fupa is a little, uh, a little off-putting. Overall, I'd say Algy's Algy can't help himself. It's not Algy's fault that he's like this, and I'm not gonna hold it against it. Algy, you're a good kid. Just, just please zip up. Next up, we have Fatty. Uh, I am not gonna make fun of Fatty because anybody that is already being made fun of for their weight has things bad enough. So, Fatty, you're a good guy. I like your glasses. It's a really good color. Really stands out. You're a solid bro. Uh, I would totally invite you to my LAN parties. Next up, we have Melvin. The Melvin looks like he should be selling me Encyclopedia Britannica on Nickelodeon. Like. He is just this very kind of smug, uh, very kind of well-groomed, like, he's a he's not just a nerd, he's like a nerd that thinks he's smarter than everybody else because he plays video games instead of watching reality television. So, very relatable. You're a good kid. When you graduate from high school and realize that, that liking video games doesn't actually translate to a computer science career, uh, you know, just know people, we've all been there. Next up, we have Thad. Uh, <laughs> we have Thad. He... He looks like if Ron Weasley wasn't played by a Hollywood actor, was like an actual child. I like this weird gangly guy, who, and also the, the, the doing that sort of classic reinforced elbows thing. This guy definitely looks like he wants to grow up to be like a lanyard in Washington, D.C., so I'm not going to say he's a bad kid, but I'm going to say he should definitely reevaluate his life choices before he finds himself like writing a think piece about how drone strikes are woke, actually. Next up, we have Bucky. Uh, my fi obviously, the three watches, very funny, very good character detail, a really good way of showing that he's neurotic and also doesn't care about fashion sense. Uh, I just, he's, Bucky is just a good kid. Like, like his posture, uh, the worst thing I can say about Bucky, 
your posture could use a little work, dude. Trust me. You, uh, just, <laughs> his posture could use a little work. But all in all, Bucky, you're a good kid. Uh, also, for a second, I thought he had pockets on his, the, on his knees for some reason, but I guess uh, he was wearing some kind of knee pads or something, or some sort of reinforcement. I mean, considering how much the kids get into fights in this game, it makes sense that they would uh, have a little battle damage. And here we have Cornelius, the black nerd. We Any nerd had a guy like this, and he was always, like, the most fun. I love this guy's haircut. Again, 2006, I'm not going to dock him points for having the fascist haircut. They We didn't know any better back then. But yeah, overall, this is just like a cool, stylish guy. He looks like he would talk to you. He looks like he would just talk my ear off about Dragon Ball Z, and I would be totally cool with it, because even though I've never watched that show, he's just so enthusiastic, and it makes me happy to see people I like be happy about things. So, you're a good kid. Next up, we have Ernest. Kind of one of the leader characters in the group. I love his little collectible card satchel that he has on his belt. Um, definitely something I've had friends that had for real. If you've ever been made fun of because you were playing Magic or Yu-Gi-Oh! in the cafeteria in high school, you've probably known a Cornelius. So, definitely a cool guy. Seems like he would give me, like, his, like, leftover, you know, common cards after he opened up a, a booster pack or something. Good kid. Would die for. And now we're sending him to the Shadow Realm. Next up, we have Donald. I guarantee you this guy's been called Dumb Donald a bunch of times by people who are too young to have ever actually watched, uh, Fat Albert, but still know the reference somehow. Definitely a little uptight. He seems like the kind of guy that discovers weed when he goes to college and just immediately becomes, like, just a, m a completely different person, arguably better person. So I'm going to say, you know what? You're an egg. One day you're going to hatch and you're going to be beautiful. You're a good kid. All right, moving on to the jocks. We have Damon. Damon is... Hmm... Immediately, uh, again, I really like the animation to this game. Body language for the jocks, completely different. Much more confident. Also, much bigger. He really, he really nails that, 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 uh, you know, he really nails that feeling, feeling of being a 15-year-old freshman and having a senior that just, just, like, towers over you. He seems like he would, like, make talk, he seems like he's somebody that would use the word freshies a lot, but, like, make fun of the younger underclassmates, but overall, I don't think he's beyond redemption. Hopefully going to college will help expand his horizons and make him realize that, you know, there's place for everyone in this world. Alright, next up, Kirby. Kirby has a very, uh, a very off-putting look to his eyes. Also, the fact that he spawns with a baseball bat. Like, he seems like somebody that you don't want to be around because he's somebody that does, like, really scary or mean things and then just says it's a joke so he doesn't have to deal with consequences. I'm not gonna say you're a bad kid. I'm gonna say, just take it from me, uh, about 100 milligrams of sertraline daily, you'll be a much happier person. Next up, we have Mandy. Uh, the jock girls are cheerleaders because I guess, uh, you know, 2006, I mean, that's only like, what, a decade after, you know, girls playing soccer was normal because of Mia Ham. A little regressive, but you know what, I'm not going to hold it against it. Like I said, this is stuck out of time, and all the jock girls being these kind of, you know, stuck up, you know, make, you know, cruel teenagers that will just emotionally devastate you is completely on brand for this game. I'm going to say she definitely looks like the type of person that wouldn't say something mean to your face but will just tell every all of her friends that she hates you and then you're all of a sudden people are gonna be mad at you for something you never even did and you're gonna be like what so i'm sorry i'm not gonna i i don't like giving my first negative review to a girl i don't know what that says about me as a person but i'm gonna say i don't like your energy you are you know i'm Five, ten years from now, I'm going to, you know, on Facebook, you're going to start getting really into being anti-vaccine. And when that happens, I'm just going to shake my head and be like, finally, an excuse to protect, to not have to care about this person anymore. Next up, we have Dan. Ugh. Hey, you freaking jerk. Dan really scares me because he has a baseball bat. So you know, he's violent, but at the same time, he has a very sad look on his face. Like, he looks like somebody that does terrible things to people, but then because he feels really bad about it, feels like that makes up for it, and never really examines the source of his pain or why he feels need to lash out at people. I, I hope life gets better for you, bro. I hope one day you're able to fix whatever is wrong with you because there are people that care about you. But not me. Bye-bye.
All right. Next up, we have Lewis, one of the few Hispanic character, one of the few Hispanic students, or or Latinx, uh, Latinx. He, hmm. I get the feeling that this guy tries to be cocky, but he's a nice guy underneath it. Like he feels like the kind of guy whose mom uh, makes him a delicious, nutritious, home cooked lunch every day, and he leaves him a little note, and he appreciates it, but he'll never let anybody know because you know toxic masculinity. Good kid. I'm, you know, this, you know, 15 years later, you're gonna be, you know, good kid. And touchdown. That's a thing. okay. All right, Casey. Uh, Casey looks like if Brock Sampson wasn't a cartoon character and was a real person, which is absolutely terrifying. Uh, I'm just gonna steer clear from this guy. Uh, just yeah, I'm gonna. Sorry, dude. I I don't want to stand too close to you. You have too much trauma here. Next up, we have Bo. Bo knows character designs, and I like Bo. Bo is... Bo looks like he was elected to student council because he's popular, and he acts like he doesn't like it, but on a deep... on a But deep inside, he actually enjoys it and feels like lets him contribute to, Bo, uh, to the school in a positive way. I feel like Bo is the type of person where if he's wrapping up at the batting cages, he'll let someone else have the last few balls, just because he's like that. He's a, he's a solid bro. Next up, we have Ted. Ted's hands are very uh, off-putting. I know Rockstar didn't figure out how to make characters that had like distinct fingers until the end of the PS2 generation, but still, just like look at these hands. They he has like the hands of an 80-year-old man. They're so detailed and so wrinkly. Like look at those palms. Um, I guess I'm gonna say it's that's good character design. It shows that this is a man who works with his hands. He doesn't care about appearances. And if you say anything bad about him, he is just going to clobber you. So I'm going to say, you're good. Next up, we have Yuri. Uh, I don't know why having one, like, vaguely Eastern European person that's very large is such, like, a stock character in young adult media. He reminds you of Blanket from Max Giebel's Big Move, kind of. Overall, I'm going to say, hmm... I guess whether or not I think he's a good kid depends on how, depends on, like, uh, hmm. I get the feeling that you meet him and you really like him and then you find out, like, his parents were involved in some sort of genocide and then you just never talk to him again because you just don't want to welcome that into your life. Next up, we have Hal and we are moving on to the Greasers. Again, keeping with the Unstuck in Time theme, the Greasers are 50s throwbacks in leather jackets, wearing a lot of pomade. Basically, if Rockabilly didn't suck and have a bunch of racists in it, uh, they're kind of like the platonic ideal of that. So Hal, I'm going to say I like him. He's he's kind of heavy set, but he's like very laid back about it. I like his hair. That jacket, I like how the uh, jacket looks very comfy. I like how it's a little too short on him. Uh, good detail kind of drives home that he's uh, from a lower socioeconomic class. Another fun thing about the Greasers is that they're kind of coded as like poor. So I'm going to say, you know what? You're, you're a good guy. Just be careful what bands you get into. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. All right, here's Johnny Vincent, the leader of the Greasers. He looks like a guy whose girlfriend uh, cheats on him just to make him mad, and then he beats up the people that she cheated on, but then goes takes her back. Uh, wait, no, that's that's not my impression. That's actually the plot of his arc in the game. So, also, I will say, okay, it looks like he's wearing two belts, which is kind of funny. I know it's part of his jacket, but still, when you see those two buckles right close, I'm just like, two belts. So, yeah, I'm going to rate this kid two belts. All right, here's Lefty. I like him. He's more approachable. He's not wearing leather. He's wearing denim. It's like, I'm a tough guy, but I'm not, like, ready for battle. You know, I'm more approachable. I'm more likable. I'm gonna say this guy, uh, he looks like if your car breaks, he will fix it for a six-pack of beer. Or since they're teenagers, I'm gonna say maybe, like, uh, I don't know, maybe if I, like, fix his computer or something for him. Good kid. Next up, we have Lola, the bad girl of Bullworth. Um... She's very entertaining, I'll give her that. She's, like, very kind of sassy and manipulative. I love that she'll just... She looks like somebody that would pretend to be your friend just because she thinks it's fun to, like, mess with you. Not, you know, obviously I'm just speaking from my personal experience here. We'll say, really like the leopard print on her jacket and her little, uh, uh, ascot. Or, I'm not sure if that's what you'd call that, but I don't... I want to call it a choker, maybe, but it looks like a tie. Either way... Cool outfit, uh, definitely violating the school dress code, but at the same time, you know, I think dress codes are, are an inherently sexist and discriminatory, you know, thing in schools. Get rid of them. Let, let people wear what they want, you know. Let people wear what they want. And stop getting, and stop getting teachers to, like, waste time measuring skirt lengths or making sure people's spaghetti straps aren't thick enough. Like, 
we, we have way more important stuff to be doing in school. Next up, here is Lucky. Uh, I gotta say, I feel like his nickname is a little ironic. This guy, he looks like uh, he looks like he's kind of prone to being on hard times. Like, he's gonna grow up to be Gil from uh, Glengarry Glen Ross. Like, this is a guy who feels like he's got everything figured out. He's got the world in his hands. Three years later, he's gonna be working at McDonald's and feeling like his life peaked when he was a teenager. Uh, so, all I gotta say is, don't worry, dude, it gets better. And here is Vance. Like, every person that spawns with a weapon, I am immediately distrustful of them. Uh, but then again, you know what, I have to, but then again, you know, like I said, these are teenagers. Part of being a teenager is that you're violent and hormonal and uncontrollable, and you're just doing your best to get by. So, you know what, try not to hurt you, buddy. That's all I'm gonna say for you, but... Overall, you seem like a pretty cool guy. You're a good student. You're a good, you're a good design. Next up, we have Ricky. Uh, the cigarette tucked behind his ear is a real power move because even in 2006, high schoolers were like, you know, that was not something they did not allow smoking. So I gotta admit, that's just a real power move. Just like, yeah, I'm just gonna openly wear this behind my ear. What are you gonna do about it? Yeah. He seems like somebody that like. He seems like somebody that I'd be thankful to have in my school because the uh, the administrators are so busy dealing with him that it's less time for them to pay attention to me. So, you know what? I'm glad I have you. You're my little human target. Next up, we have Norton. He looks like he's kind of going gray, which is a very uh, interesting choice for a teenager. Then again, maybe it's just the graphics of this era. Uh, I like that he's wearing fingerless gloves. Fingerless gloves are really cool. So I'm going to say he's a cool guy. And with Gord, we move on to the preps. I'm sorry, I do not like you, Gord. You you look like you're like in the the Young Republicans Club at high school, and you like you lose your college acceptance letter because you made a TikTok where you said the N word. Definitely, I'm gonna keep my distance from this guy. And here is Tad. Tad is dreamy. I know he's a I know he's a troubled person, but I feel like I could fix him. I can fix him. I will fix him. Tad, I will fix you. After Tad, there's Chad. Ooh, those uh, those wrist wraps really freaking me out. I'm, mm. I have to admit, given given all the connotations that the name had that the name Chad has now, I'm gonna give this guy a thumbs up just because he's black, and I know that's gonna piss some people off. Up next is Biff. He looks like he's, like, kind of a softer prep. Like, he looks like the guy that has, like, a really expensive gaming PC that, like, you and your friends with him just because you want to, like, get to play games at the highest resolutions that you can't get at home. Or, like, he's like the, or, like, he's the guy who has, like, the brand new console as soon as it comes out. Like, this is the kind of guy that will give you, like, an old DS or something just because he doesn't use it anymore. So, if you're a poor kid, this guy gets, like, a huge curve in terms of how great he is. And here is Justin. I'm saying right away, the fact that he spawns with a, with a yaoi paddle and he has the half-untucked shirt, he makes me very uncomfortable. He seems like he grows up into a serial killer that people on Tumblr sexualize. So, bad news for me, but good news for a certain type of person that I'm kind of glad I'm not. This is Bryce. I feel like... I feel like somehow he has like a management position in the customer service job you work at, even though he's like the same age as you, and he just just like a real little shit about it. Like he rubs it in your nose at every opportunity and is impossible to ask for time off from. So I'm gonna say uh I'm gonna say unionize and get rid of this guy. Next up we have Darby. He looks like if there was a lesser Hemsworth brother that had his nose broken. Uh so yeah, he gives me the vibe of somebody who is like the youngest in his family, someone that has a lot of insecurity, but at the same time uh, hides it by being very confident. I'm going to say, best case scenario, he grows up into a guy that's really nice, but he has that like resting prep face that just makes you not trust him. And here we have Pinky, the prep girl. Uh, she gives me the vibe of someone whose parents gets them cosmetic surgery as like an 18th birthday present. I, I do like her little, uh, the fact that she has a little pocket on her dress, because, you know, women need pockets too. That's a nice detail for especially like a very male-dominated uh, studio like Rockstar to do. Overall, I'm going to say she's going to grow up to be like one of the real housewives of Bullworth. And here is Angie. She's the first of, I don't want to say generic, but kind of unaffiliated members of the school. Angie, she's cool. Uh, she... She has two dialogue lines in, that she repeats all the time, and one of them is about loving bunnies, so uh, I can definitely relate. Bunnies are good. So, you know what, Angie? You're, you're cool. You seem like the type of girl that would, like, 
I could like talk to Disney movies about and not be called gay. This is Parker. Parker, buddy, just take it from me. Turn off YouTube autoplay. I don't think you could handle uh, what the algorithm is going to feed you. It's going to lead you to some bad places. And you're just not equipped to deal with that. And here we have Jerry, one of the townies, the people who aren't Bullworth students. Uh, Jerry, wearing two shirts for warmth and having a bunch of holes in your pants? That's really funny. That's like a good character design. Uh, so I'm gonna say, you know what? You're a compelling guy. I feel like you have a very interesting life story. You look like somebody who'd be talking loudly in the booth behind me in a restaurant, and me and the person I'm with would be like quietly whispering like, what is this guy talking about? This is insane, but not saying anything because we don't want him to know that we're eavesdropping on him. Otto, hell yeah. He may spawn with a brick floating, uh, uh, floating next to his hand, but Otto seems like a chill guy. No sleeves, that's always a power move, you know. Let people know you don't care about fashion, you care about comfort. And that's been, that's a good message to send to the world, I feel like. That's the way I try to live. Also, two armbands on one arm, no armbands on the other. Asymmetrical designs are always a plus for me. And honestly, just that logo, that's a pretty sweet logo on his shirt, I gotta admit. So you know what? You're, you're good. Uh, excuse me? You okay there, dude? His name is Leon, and it kind of looks like he's wearing Leon Kennedy's jacket from Resident Evil 4. And I mean, honestly, with how, like, kind of busy and detailed these textures are, he, he kind of looks like a Resident Evil 4 character. So you know what? Uh, Resident Evil 4 is one of the best games of all time, so I'm going to say you're one of the best NPCs in all of Bully. Duncan is kind of like the dark mirror to Otto. He is, uh, ow. Okay, you know what? Just for that, you don't get a review. You get to go to the Shadow Realm. This is Henry. He he looks like the he looks like the one guy you know that's into wrestling and is actually like really buff. Like he wants to be a wrestler and he's putting in the uh, the time and effort to be one. So I'm gonna say good guy. Uh, I feel like he tried to sell me steroids in the changing room at the gym, and I would have to like very politely say no because I was worried about pissing him off. But you know what? I have to admit, there are people who want that. So I'm going to say not for me, but I don't know if you're trying to... I, he would definitely recommend like a good stack for you. This is Gurney. He's definitely at the point where he's old enough where him interacting with teenagers is kind of weird. Like, he feels like he's the type of guy that walks up to you when you're like at GameStop and like really excitedly tells you about some game he played in the 90s. And you just kind of have to like side-eye your friend and try and come up with an excuse to leave because he just will not stop talking about how like madden 95 was the best one or something next up we have omar he dresses like a god hand uh, character like the, the the no sleeves the wristbands he looks like a guy who is who does backyard who does backyard wrestling once and then gets so messed up he never does it again but he never loses his enthusiasm for it so you know rock on and this is max one of the prefects from bullworth uh as always, uh, all cops are bastards. Doubly so for people, uh, you know, look, speaking from experience, there's, you know, school is a miserable place to be because there's a small number of people that just have to exercise power over people so they can feel like they're important. And he is definitely one of those people. Like, he seems like somebody where there's like a news article about like somebody getting arrested and he's in the comments being like, we should fucking execute them. They don't deserve to live. And then he has that quiet rage that he brings with him to work every day. And the students can definitely sense. Like, he seems like the type of person that will like, have a breakdown over someone wearing silly bands or something. I do not like you, Max. Stay far, far away from me and stay in the virtual world where you belong. Here is Seth. He teaches concealed carry classes on the weekends. Also, he definitely used to have a Confederate flag on his truck, but he changed it to a thin blue line flag once that became socially unacceptable. But you know, when, he, when he's with like-minded people, he definitely complains about it. He thinks that the Duke of Hazards not being for sale is like a, uh, is like a crime against humanity. Edward. Edward looks like one of those kids that like like went along with the boys that were making fun of him because they were the only people that paid him any attention and now he's grown up into being one of them. I feel like he's at the point where he's like too far he's realized that he's not happy with his life, but at the same time he's too far for him to really change. He'd rather just keep living this lie than acknowledge that he was wrong. So I wish you all the best. This is Carl with a K. Carl with a C is always a cool name. Carl's always fun. Carl with a K, unless you're Carl Marx, I don't want to hear from you. And here we have Theo the janitor. Uh, Theo the janitor, he looks like 
He looks like Theo the janitor. He looks like he's a hard ass, but deep down inside, he sympathizes with the students because the school pays him like garbage, and he's gone from being like a full time employee to being like a contract employee. And he's just at the point where he's like, he recognizes who the real bad guys are. You know, he might get mad at a kid for throwing up in the middle of the hallway for the third time that week, but really, he's going to save his rage for the school board meetings when they decide that the bonus that they get for doing good on uh, standardized testing only goes to the teachers instead of everybody at the school, which is a real thing that happens. Here we go. Miss Peabody. She is the platonic ideal of the kind of older harpy teacher that is just makes your life miserable. She's, uh, yeah, I'm definitely getting Miss Crab from Calvin and Hobbes vibes from her, except like, you know, she's thin. But I know that this is a caricature, but it's a caricature that has survived so long for a good reason. It's like a, it's a sort of very good caricature of the type of women that just like where that get enjoy this kind of power that being a teacher gives them and the light of idealism that drove them to the career has long since died out of their eyes so i'm gonna say good character design not somebody you want to have having authority over you for an entire year here's mr burton the gym teacher i'm normally going uh going just off of aesthetics again he's kind of this very basic a well-worn trope of the gym teacher. He's bald, he's overweight, has a big mustache, you know. I will say, I'm I'm gonna break the rules for this. I'm gonna get, say this guy sucks because there's one mission, one of the only real missteps in the game, considering it's, it's a 2006 Rockstar game, is there's a mission where he has you steal used panties from the girl's dorm and deliver them to him. And, like, I'm sorry, I draw the line at preying on teenagers. So, you, I'm sorry, but you just gotta go. Here is Mr. Lunt, another janitor. One detail on the janitors are those giant key rings, and, uh, uh, let's see. I'm gonna say he seems like the type of person that the students like because he's always willing to take time out to, like, tell them stories, tell them fun stories and listen to their problems, but it endangers his job because he spends so much time talking to them, he doesn't actually get the cleaning done that he needs to do. And even, But then, even then, the administrators don't feel bad about having to tell him that because they like him too. He's a likable guy. He looks like the type of person that is perfectly happy being a janitor and deserves to, you know, be paid a living wage and enjoy his life and get to retire. Also, he definitely deserves health insurance because uh, schools, if you're an adult and you're in a school, you are going to get sick. You have you know, just so many children, you know, breathing in germs. Oh, God, I just I just remembered it's COVID and there are kids in school and I just got really sad uh, here in Jacksonville, Florida, where we, we uh, we've been the number one. Do, we've been the number one district in the country for COVID infected for COVID infections, and also uh, last week the statistic that came out was about a third of these infections were from people 18 and under. So, uh, I'm that's why I'm spending time in Bullworth. Real life just sucks too much right now. Here's Mr. Galloway, the English teacher, again. Like most of the teachers, a, a very sort of good trope. He looked, you know, he's the closet alcoholic, very stern. I get the feeling that he'll like trash talk your, you know, his students' creative writing projects for not being, you know, emotionally honest or intellectual enough. But then, you know, he's never, but then he's never published a book in his life and all the stuff he sends in gets rejected because it sucked. And he just has to struggle with that. Definitely, you know, definitely someone who's more in love with the idea of being an author than actually writing. So the, I'm going to say very good design, really matches his character. Also, definitely loses his job because the kids find his like hidden boo stash and then wind up like passed out in the middle of the hall after third period. Not that I'm speaking from experience, of course. And here we go, Edna, the, again, the lunch lady that's old and ugly and has like a very like raspy voice. Uh, same, same with the gym teacher. What, one of the only missteps in this game is that there's a mission where you help her date rape somebody, and then she like, you know, drags their unconscious self off, to fade to black. So I'm gonna say, Edna, you should not be around children. I'm sorry. I, you know, just I don't trust you around food anymore now. And here is Miss Winston. Uh, she's kind of the She's kind of the, I don't know, not the vice principal, but she's kind of like the receptionist for the principal. She's like super infatuated with him, but as soon as he's gone, she immediately just becomes like a very petty and mean person, and her whole outfit really gets that. Like, looking at her, I kind of get like uh, like Miss Coulter from the Golden Compass vibes. Like, she will be very nice to you, and then she'll have her monkey Damon try and like strangle your mouse Damon, because you disrespected her. I'm sorry if that reference is a little too... Uh... I'm sorry about that. You know, no, 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 I'm not going to be sorry. This is a game set in a school. That's a very, that's a book for kids. I can reference it here. You don't like it? 
you're like half an hour into this video already. You're not going to turn it off. And here is Mrs. McCray, the, the school nurse. Uh, fun fact, a lot of schools, especially here in Florida, don't have full-time school nurses anymore. They're people that only come like once a week or, uh, or have like a fixed schedule. So uh, if you have any fond childhood memories of being sick and being sent to the nurse's office, kids today don't get to do that. <laughs> It's if you're sick, call your parents and go home. We don't, we can't afford a nurse. So, I'm, I enjoy this character and I'm glad she's here because we certainly don't have her in real life anymore. And here is Mr. Huntington. Uh, I, I feel like every school I've ever been in has, has had like a large African American man that works as administrator. And again, this is very, this is relatively real realized. But something about Brockstar is that they're an Irish company, and this game has like a very British feel to it, like. In America, we don't really have boarding schools, and there is this kind of very weird feeling where parts of the town and stuff. It's set in New England, but it has like kind of a very British feel to it. Mr. Huntingdon is another weird aspect of that because he's like the only like black administrator in the game. He's like the only black administrator in the game, but he has like I want to say like a South African accent. He's it does not feel American, and but then again, that's kind of why I like him. It's one of those weird quirks that just kind of drive home why I like this game because America is portrayed by non Americans is always really cool. I mean, I love Earthbound, I love Deadly Premonition, and I love Bully. And here is the librarian, Mrs. Carvin. Uh, she looks like somebody that will like, she sees you like. I don't know, watching an AMV on the school computer, and she thinks that all anime is porn because she, like, busted a kid looking at hentai. And then you're, like, very, like, embarrassedly trying to be like, no, this is just an animation form. I'm an animation fan. And she's like, she's like, get out of here before I call your parents and never come back here again. Okay, yeah, that's actually something that happened to me, and it, it, it really sucked. <laughs> and here is Miss Phillips, the art teacher. Uh, yeah, she really, again... Good design really looks like somebody that like a lot of teenage boys would have crushes on, but in a way, but is like, but not in a way that's like salacious or uncomfortable. Just she's a pretty lady. Kids spend a lot. You know, she teaches art class, which is a class where a lot of people are going to be looking at her or like drawing and stuff. And also, one of the really funny running joke, one of the funnier gags in this game is that every time uh, you do an art class, it's it's Jimmy doing a different painting of her in like a sultry pose. So, yeah, I'm going to say very well realized. Definitely somebody I would take an art class with, and then, like, she would be bad at me because, like, I don't study anatomy enough. I just want to draw, like, cool robots or something. And here is the biology teacher, Mr. Slaughter, uh, with a spelled S-L-A-W-T-E-R. Um, again, yeah. He, he looks like one of the scientists from Half-Life 1, so I really like him. Uh, yeah. Also, I just really love, like, his eye bags and his liver spots. Like, yeah, the guy that teaches the class about life looking like he's about to die is very funny. So, again, just stellar work for everybody involved. I really like this guy, and I, you know, so I really like this guy, and I'm not really going to dissect why. <laughs> See what I did there? It's a, a biology joke. I dissect. And here is Dr. Crabblesnitch, the headmaster of Bullworth. One of my favorite little jokes in Bully is the fact that the school of Bullworth really sucks, but the, but the guy in charge of it thinks it's like some grand institution of learning and gives these very lofty speeches about like how, about shaping children up and making them you know live up to their potential. And in reality, his school is just garbage full of the people that can't get to any other school and the teachers that like got fired from other schools because they're so dysfunctional. So I feel like he's a great face for that. He's somebody who is an administrator who doesn't actually, you know, have any connection to his school or like any real understanding of how it works. He just loves the idea of the institution. And as far as he's concerned, anybody that opposes him or, or just doesn't do what he says is, uh, is, is disrespecting that institution and he will respect accordingly. So yeah. Also tie clip, great detail. And here is Sheldon, one of the first of the underclassmen. One of the fun things about Bully is that it does have some younger kids in it. Jimmy's supposed to be 15, so I'm not sure if this is one of those schools that has like middle and high school in one big thing, or if Sheldon is just very small or what. But yeah, Sheldon, Sheldon is great. I feel like Sheldon is the kind of guy that like nobody would say anything mean about. They might be a little annoyed by him, but he does like something really funny or sweet, and then you're like, nah, I can't hate Sheldon. Sheldon's great. Sheldon, you're a wonderful kid, and, uh, you know, just, it gets better. Hang in there. This is Christy. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't really have very much to say about Christy. Uh, she's a great example of why school uniforms are so dehumanizing. 
I can't read anything from her. She's just, uh, you know, a, a teenager in a school uniform. I'm sorry, I'm sure you have a very bright light within you, and I hope that one day you don't have to keep it hidden under a bushel like this. This is Gloria. Gloria looks like she has a huge collection of stuffed animals that she's really proud of, but she also kind of is, like, deathly afraid of anybody at school finding out about, because, you know, she's at the point in her life where she's feeling, you know, she's, she's worried about being cringe. And here is Pedro. He's one of the students that aren't initially in the school, but joined throughout the school year. Uh, Pedro... I gotta say, I really like the, the band-aid on his leg, the untucked shirt. He has this very kind of disheveled look to him. Like, like he's, uh, he looks like somebody where, like, after he gets out of his desk, there's, like, a weird residue on his seat. Like, he smells weird. Like, he's the kind of kid you want to be nice to, but he doesn't bathe, and you just can't really stand being around him because he's just so offensive to the senses. So, my man, uh, here's, you, I think that beneath all that grime, there's a, there's a good person in there. Just... Just axe is not a substitute for bathing. I'm sorry. And here is Constantinos. Glad to see some Greek representation in this game. Uh, Constantinos, I gotta say, this guy, he looks like his dad owns, like, a re owns a restaurant that's, like, kind of crappy, but at the same time, like, since his dad runs it, he gives you free food because you're his friend, so you're like, hell yeah, I'll hang out with you there after school. And, uh, looks like a lot of, you know, place where you'd have a lot of fond memories, but at the same time, like, once you're an adult, you, you, like, you know, once you have to start paying for it, you're like, I'm good, thanks. This is Ray. He looks like he flunked out of the gifted program and is, like, a straight C student, but still thinks he's smarter than everybody because he watches South Park. Also, he's one of those people who, like, completely missed the point of Fight Club. This is Ivan. He looks like he, he looks like he brews his own Kool-Aid wine in the family basement, and he's definitely gone to school hungover a few times. So I'm gonna say... Very, I'm going to say good design, just the first step is admitting you have a problem. This is Trevor. Trevor looks like he has two ferrets, and he's always trying to go viral with them, but, you know, he just hasn't figured out how to get the keywords right, so all he gets is, like, three views and a bot trying to, trying to link him to, like, some Russian site. So I'm going to say keep at it, dude. Just enjoy your little critters. One day, one day you'll find, the, one day they'll find the startup you wish for them. Also, steel-toed boots. Uh, as as a kid who wore steel-toed boots in high school, very well realized. Yeah, you're you're definitely someone who is gonna like get a door shut on your foot and then give like a big smug smirk and be like, and you people laughed at me for wearing these things. Well, who's laughing now? Ha ha ha! And next up we have Eunice. Eunice looks like the type of person that if anybody picks on her, all the other kids are gonna beat them up. Like she looks like the type of person that everybody has like feels like they have to kind of protect and watch out for. Eunice has it good, and it's one of the few good things you could probably say about the student body, is that, you know, yeah, we're, 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 we're mean to each other, but nobody messes with Eunice. You mess with Eunice, you mess with all of us. And here is Russell. Honestly, the, the stereotype of, like, the very big, very slow guy that goes, duh, a lot, has thankfully kind of died out over the past 20 years. He's kind of a remnant of that, but at the same time, the fact that, like, he, I think he actually goes Russell Smash at some point. Like, he's very silly and very elevated, but at the same time, you know, approachable. Like, I get the feeling that Russell, like, you know, once he's calmed down, he's a very nice guy, but if he gets worked up, he... He looks like the type of person that when he's in college, he gets too drunk at a party and everybody like, and everybody's like really nervous because if he loses interest in like the Sega bass fishing he's playing on someone's Dreamcast, he's just going to start like beating people up. This is Dr. Bambio. Again, this is someone I'm going to stay far away from because he looks like somebody where like you, you got like, you got a checkup from him once like five years ago and he's still finding new things to bill you for and you just really, re you just really regret the whole thing. This is Mr. Sullivan. He looks like the generic create a character option in every Xbox 360 game. This is Miss Kopke. All I gotta say is, is there a Mr. Kopke? This is Miss Rashinsky. She has turf bags. This is Miss Isaacs. She's the type of person that still wears fur and doesn't and is like very confused when people react badly to that. <laughs> this is Bethany Jones. She has a panic attack every time she sees a homeless person at an intersection and She'll spend like five minutes repeating John Stossel talking points about how homeless people are lazy and entitled and are actually richer than regular people. And this is O'Rourke, the firefighter of Boltworth. I really respect their decision to not take the easy route and just make like a hunky, sexy firefighter. This guy looks like a dad firefighter. This guy, he looks like all the younger firefighters look up to him and he's like really, he's very, he's very paternal of them. And really, he's just like a great guy for the job. 
Like, this is a man whose arms you want carrying you out of a burning building. This is Officer Monson. All cops are bastards, but I gotta say, one of the really nice things about Bully and that makes it such a fun escape, no guns on these cops. Nope, just walkie-talkies. Although the downside is they will uh, tackle and arrest you if you accidentally, like, kick a box on the street. So even, even in this idealized fantasy world, cops are still bastards. This is Zach Owens, the comic book store owner. Not really, not really branching out from the basic comic book guy mold, but you know what? That's okay. Uh, cargo shorts, the knockoff Flash t-shirt, the glasses, the sideburns, the boots. Honestly, this looks like a guy that w I would be like in my community college anime club that I would like feel superior to, even though we both basically look exactly the same and I have zero reason to do that. Also, as the comic book store owner, I just gotta say, Zach, you've got a, you got a really tough 15 years ahead of you. Good luck, and I really hope that you don't become one of those comics gate weirdos. Here we have Trent. Trent is a JRPG villain masquerading as a high schooler. This is the shop teacher, Tobias Mason. I just want to say, a man in an apron, instantly approachable and trustworthy. This is somebody who who knows what they're doing, and is you know this is somebody who's taking precautions, especially when the the easy stereotype is to have uh, shop teachers just be inattentive or whatever. This guy looks like yeah. Also, I gotta say, uh, considering that Rockstar usually goes for like the most lazy 69 420 jokes uh, the fact that this guy isn't missing any fingers i gotta give him i gotta give him props that's you did not take the easy route out for, you did not take the easy route out for this guy and, and i appreciate that this is mr grant he's a homeless vietnam vet that lives in an abandoned bus on the school campus gotta admit this is a very good design like he looks like somebody where you're gonna like thinking about visiting a store and then when you drive by it you see him like sitting on the ground outside of it with a pack and then you're like ah oh, geez you know what do i really feel like going through the whole rigmarole of having of being approached by this guy just to go to the store that might make me a bad ally but what can i say i have social anxiety also uh it, it also the completion to his subquest is apparently you find out he is he gets abducted by aliens so you know what I have to admit, if if you had to pick a representative of humanity for better or worse, I think uh, you know this ranting homeless person is a pretty good representative. Because, like they say, you know, you're only as good as the as the worst off people. This is the mascot, the Bullworth Bull. Hmm. I have to admit, this this does feel very well. I mean, like. As somebody who is like into animation and costuming and design and also a furry, I, this is very well realized. This reminds you like every crappy high school mascot I've seen, where it's not even like a it's not even like an actual suit. It's just like you have like a head that was made like a decade ago that has to be like sprayed for lice after every game, and just like some gloves. And other than that, you're just like wearing like 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 a onesie. This is a very good mascot designed by designed by sports people that don't actually know very much about design or this looks no that's me actually i i love sports design stuff i love jerseys i love the, the the hearing about how they're designed i love the color schemes there's a lot of really good artwork done in sports and as a nerd i i should do better than trying to dismiss it as being just purely the realm of of like you know dumb jobs so you know what you're good here oh okay you know what fuck that Fuck you. <laughs> and here is Mr. O, the Asian accented convenience store owner that uh, every piece of media still just loves to have as a character. I'll give him credit, he doesn't card you when you buy spray paint from him, so you know what? He is a good, good guy. I get the feeling that the kids at Bullworth make fun of his accent, even though they don't know any other languages themselves, and they aren't aware of how hurtful that is. But to his face, they are very nice, and they drive a lot of business to him, so he'll put up with the odd, you know, tone-deaf or offensive remark. This is Officer Williams. Um... All I have new to add is the soul patch is a very 2006 touch. This is Davis. He looks like somebody that buys all long sleeve tees, but then just rolls them up so they may as well have been short sleeve tees. But he just does it for reasons that he doesn't understand. He is, he is a man who is a victim to the absurdity of the universe and the human mind. This is Mr. Breckendale. Uh... Guys that look like this don't seem to really happen very much anymore. I get the feeling that this looks like this was an actual guy that like one of the developers had had as like a teacher or something when they were in school in the 70s and then 30 years later just put him in the game and he stands out but in a cool way like like he looks like if Rockstar made Disco Elysium this is what Harrier Dubois would look like. 
This is Mr. Doolin. He has a darkness to his eyes that you just can't shake the discomfort of. Like, he seems like the type of person that hangs out in a Taco Bell and then just, like, just to chat up people as they come and go. And everyone's really uncomfortable. At the same time, it's, like, not enough of a transgression where ta where confronting him about it would be an even worse transgression. So everyone just kind of, you know, just learns to live with him. This is Troy. He has those eye bags because he likes to stay up to watch Adult Swim every night, even though he knows it only leaves him with, like, five hours of sleep. He looks like he definitely looks like the, he definitely looks like the type of person that sleeps through all of his classes and then fails and is very frustrated. But at the same time, because of how adolescence affects the brain, he just can't help himself not going to sleep earlier. He seems like he's the type of person that's gonna like get. He seems like he's the type of person that's gonna get like a CPAP machine in his thirties and it's gonna like completely change his life for the better. This is Nate. Nate is the kind of guy where when you meet them, the first thing you do is scan their tattoos for hate symbols. He's definitely the type of guy that not only paid a hundred dollars to buy a mug from like some right wing YouTuber, he's really proud of it and probably like poses with it on his Facebook profile. I'm not sure Mr. Carmichael is actually human. He definitely has kind of like a um that Mark Zuckerberg just vacant alien robot face. Like I get the feel like I get the feeling that he would um he, he has like the, the energy he has is like if aliens arrived he would be he would like defect to be a quizling and help them take over in exchange for like you know getting to keep all of his internal organs this is nikki charles uh two first names always cool uh i really he, i like his really fancy kicks i like his, uh, his jewelry this looks like he he's cool he looks like he's a nice guy but he's also like addicted to hustle culture so it's kind of exhausting to spend time with him because he's always talking about like his next gig or his next payday or he's like you know he's to or he's gonna start trying to you know he's gonna try and sell you he's gonna try and like convince you to buy like a oh, hundred dollar pair of shoes that's supposed to like stop bullying that's that's a reference for a video i'm working on right now i, I think it's uh i think it's really gonna be funny this is Mr. Watts. He looks like, hmm, he looks like he worked on, he looked like he was part of the engineering team that invented Splenda, and then once it was made, they just laid them all off because they didn't need them anymore. So now he, like, teaches high school chemistry, but he's still, like, very resentful. And he's sure to remind the students that he's actually, like, a big, way overqualified for the job and is only there because at that point in his life, he just needs the health insurance at this point. This is Miss Abby. She looks like she's the type of person that still pays for things with a check. And when you're stuck behind her in line, you you feel bad about how mad you are at that. Like, you recognize that as people get older, they kind of lose the ability to learn new skills. And the fact that she's, you know, she's just doing her best and, you know, there's nothing wrong. And you know, she's, there's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, you're just like, you just don't want to have to deal with it. So I'm going to say good person, good lady. If you see her wandering around in like a nightcap at like 10 o'clock, call the police. This is Mikhailovich. He's just a Grand Theft Auto character that's been dropped into Bully. Like, this looks like the type of guy that would tell Nico Bellic to go, like, sh kill a house full of gangsters. But then he'd do it, but on the drive there, he'd spend the whole time talking about how sad he is about his violent past and how he wants to change. And, you know, it just makes you realize, wow, this game is very confused. What I'm saying is that Grand Theft Auto 4 is not a good game. This is Freely. He carries a lifelong resentment and surliness from all the jokes people made about his name when he was a kid. This is Dorsey. He's the kind of guy that, like, makes fun of dudes that wear backpacks, but always wears his, like, utility sash with him everywhere, and just doesn't see any, and just doesn't see the hypocrisy. This is Hector. He's one of a few little people in this game, and I gotta admit, especially for 2006, like, they are pretty nice and respectful and treat them like actual characters. So, I, I gotta admit, oh, this guy's Texas Tuxedo, the denim on denim. This guy looks like he does not give a fuck, and honestly, that's, like, a real power move, and I like him a lot. This is Osborne. He looks like he wears long sleeves all the time because he has prison tats that he can't afford to get removed. And you see the little bits peeking out around his wrist and you're like, ooh, I wonder what the story with this is. But you're respectful enough to never actually ask him about it because you figure if he wants you to know, he'll tell you. This is Maria Teresa. Uh, she kind of looks like she's from The Sims. I, don't, I like it. She's got that really cool belt, uh, open shoes, got the shirt with like one button holding it together it doesn't fit in with bully that much but it's a cool character you know what for an npc that you would walk past on the street she looks like she's like a very interesting person that's frustrated being stuck in new england which is a you know 
an incredibly white demographic area and also like and for every genuine microaggression that she faces she also has to deal with like somebody who's trying to be like really condescendingly like supportive of her like she feels like she's the type of person where when Pete, she's like in a mexican restaurant with people they like roll their r's when they're ordering and she just like has to do everything she can to not just like yell at them this is Chuck. Chuck always wears a hard hat, and even though some of his like, and even though some of his coworkers will like make fun of him for it, you know he doesn't care. He puts his own safety and well-being above everything else, and that's why he's able to you know continue working in a in in the construction business. This is Ian. He's been wearing a bandana since the 90s because he saw like some people in a music video doing it. He has no idea that it's like a gang thing. He's just like, yeah, this looks really cool, and it keeps the sweat out of my eyes. I don't get why more people don't do it. It's a good thing he never leaves New England. This is Fenwick. He is a very respectful portrayal of a person in a mental institute. See? See what I mean? Just the fact that even when you just spawn him in like this, he will attack you and run away. Like, you know, especially considering how like dire and cruel GTA 5 and 4 became, Bully is pretty good by Rockstar standards, but it still has stuff like this that makes you just kind of roll your eyes and just be like, really, dude? Like, even in 2006, just having these, like, drooling people in stained hospital gowns that attack you on site is, like... I feel like y you guys should have known better. This is Neil. Neil looks like the kind of guy that does really well as a mechanic because he just exudes knowledge and trustworthiness. So, like, when people who don't know about cars visit him, they don't feel like they're being ripped off or he's trying to upsell them. They, they trust him to know what's best for their car. Especially women, because he's very respectful and also kind of good-looking, but not to the point where it's, like, intimidating. He's definitely, like... Like, he looks like the type of guy where, like, your mom picks up the car, and then when she's driving away, she describes him as handsome, and you go, Mom! But at the same time, you know, you kind of get it. This is Mr. Svensson, the mailman. One of the only adults in Bully that gets to wear shorts. Good for him. I like this guy, because he looks like he's the type of person that still delivers mail on foot. Like, he can, like, throw it, like, he can just, like, throw a newspaper and hit your door every single time. This is Denny. He doesn't have a chin, and he really overcompensates for it. This is Gary. He is he's the evilest, but he's the evilest, but also one of the most interesting characters in this game cuz you know, for 2006 he is really prescient. Now that now that the world is basically full of these kind of psychotic assholes that just like, you know, have like their armies of people behind them, he definitely feels like he would fit right in. Like he looks like somebody like Keemstar would have on as a guest to explain how like dead naming a trans person is actually cool and good. Like Gary is the kind of person that uses the word lol cow and ironically and like Gary buys uh, Gary doesn't think he has to take his medication because he buys supplements from Alex Jones. Also, Gary's the type of guy where if you tell him that something is bad or problematic, he tells you he's going to buy like five copies of it just to spite you, but then he never does and it's like a really transparent attempt at getting a rise out of people that just makes them that just kind of makes him look weaker in everyone's eyes. This is Krakauer. He doesn't really fit in with the game's art style. It almost looks like they like scanned a real person's face. He's just like he's just like a Max Payne looking mofo. This is Mr. Marotti, the barber. He looks like somebody that gives you a haircut you don't like, but you still say it's okay just because you don't want to have to deal with confronting him. For, and then just for like the next few months, every time you look in the mirror, you're reminded of it and have just like a low-key stig of resentment, even though it's entirely your fault. This is Petey. He's the, he's the school punching bag, one of Jimmy Hopkins' first and most steadfast friends, and also one of Gary's earliest and most consistent victims of bullying. I definitely feel for this guy like he looks like the type of person like that somebody would be making fun of in high school and i would like actively go out of my way to be like what is wrong with you leave this kid alone he's good in this house we love Petey. also the first time i ever heard the word femboy was a cutscene where gary is bullying him and calls him that so uh what can i say Petey? you're the original femboy this is mr smith he's what i'm gonna look like in 30 years this is Melody, one of the students that joins later in the year. She looks like someone that used to be homeschooled, but is moving into public school, and the transition is very difficult on her, but at the same time, it's very eye-opening, because after her entire life being told about how you know school is like prison and the people there are terrible, she's realizing, oh no, these kids are just like me, the institution sucks, but at the same time, I'm starting to realize my parents are actually human and flawed, and may not know what they're talking about or know what's best for me. She's definitely going to have a painful future ahead of her and is going to eventually, uh, you know, cut off her mom because she won't stop talking about how Obama is a Kenyan. This is Karen, a reminder that once upon a time, Karen was just a name and not shorthand for a woman who does a thing I dislike. 
Karen looks like she's the type of person that just kind of keeps to herself in the back of the classroom, but she draws like insanely well for her age, and as soon as people find out, they just all want to pester her to draw them, or like draw Garfield for her, and she does it because she likes the attention, but at the same time, like, she recognizes that it's not fair that she does all this work without, without getting paid. She's going to grow up to have a Patreon, but at the same time, always kind of feel an inferiority complex because she won't draw porn, and that's what really gets the money on there. So I'm going to say good design and uh, good person. This is Gordon. Gordon uh, Gordon is really into soccer, not just because he thinks it's a fun sport, but he does not as an affectation because he thinks it's superior to American football. He's like a budding Anglophile. Like, in a few years, when Sherlock comes out, he's never going to shut up about it, and then five years after that, he's going to act like he always hated it. This is Brandy, the other little person in the game. She's really fun. I, I really like her outfit. I kind of like the whole, like, owning your sexuality and everything, you know, being like, yeah, I'm a little person, but I'm still hot. People like me, and fuck you if you don't like that. That's a really good power move. Also, uh... Also, also, one of the missions in the game is she has you like go out. She makes you destroy all the little garden gnomes in the town because they're. Off she thinks it's like offensive to little people, which is honestly funny joke. And I kind of get her point. Like, yeah, having this like you know gritting caricature of you decorating everyone's lawns is actually no. Now that I think about it, that was a thing that actually ha uh, you know it it's almost kind of like a, a reference to the, the the old racist lawn jockeys maybe i'm reading into that too much but again great character when i first saw her i was like oh geez what's rockstar gonna do now and nope turns out she's actually really fun i like i, I like you a whole lot this is the pit bull this is what every dog in the game looks like very cute uh also you know got that cute kind of broad vacant face uh you got the you know, stocky little body they give it a spike collar which is a little oof but at the same time like i, I get it it's a it's a cute look especially if you want it to make it look vicious uh, i really like pit bulls anybody that brings out like dog bite statistics when they're mentioned i basically put you on the same class as people that are really into fbi crime statistics like there's a point where you're just trying to rationalize how mocking people from lower socioeconomic classes by proxy by uh by belittling their pets and just like you know what no good dog i like this dog you know pet all dogs I really hate the can, the can you pet the dog meme and how like it's just been so cynically like monetized as a way of promoting games, but I gotta admit, it would be kind of fun to have a way of interacting this dog without fighting with it. I mean, even in Postal 2, you could throw dog treats. Like, come on, let, let Jimmy buy some milk bones. This is Lance. Uh, I think it's kind of funny that this is uh, the second black character named Lance it, to come from a Rockstar game. Maybe that's a reference. I don't know. I gotta admit, I do kind of like the way his... Uh, the way his sweater is kind of tucked in to show off his belt buckle. It's like a very fashion conscious choice, even within the confines of a school uniform system. So I'm going to say this guy, this guy gets a thumbs up for thinking outside the box. This is Crystal. She has a fanny pack. So instant 10 out of 10, great character, great design, totally cool. Uh, I can't tell whether she, she'd be giving me hard candies or crystal meth out of that thing, but either way, very, very cool. This is Mr. Martin. He looks like if somebody was making a licensed game out of a Josh Brolin movie, but they couldn't get his image rights, so this was like their closest thing they could get while being legally distinct. This is Ethan. He really likes baseball. This is Wade. He still wakes up early to watch Saturday morning cartoons every weekend. This is Tom. I, I love how he has that little, like, like cool, like, anime slice into his eyebrows, especially all with the black eye, like, he... He seems like the type of person where he probably, like, shaved that thing into his eyebrow himself just to make himself look tough. This is Mr. Ramirez. He makes reference to 70s sitcoms nobody's ever heard of, and they just kind of politely smile and act like they know what he's talking about. This is Mr. Huntington. He's another victim of the overly detailed hands. Also, they, they don't really match his skin tone. That's, like, another interesting thing I've noticed with, old, especially in older video games when they try to do African-American characters, is a lot of times, like, the hands and the head don't match. I know there's, like, a technical reason for that, and, uh, but, but still, just, he looks like he's wearing, like, gloves, but he's not. Or maybe he is. Maybe he's, like, that lawyer from Always Sunny. He, he feels bad about his small hands, so he wears, like, a pair of larger hands over them. This is Mr. Wiggins. He he embarrasses his grandkids because he doesn't realize that people could see your likes on Facebook. And he's the type of guy that's a member of like a group called like Big Boobs Now XXX 
open bracket, horny, close bracket. This is Floyd. Floyd looks like the kind of guy who sells himself as like really chill and laid back, but he also still uses like the R slur unironically, and then just doesn't get why people don't want to hang out with him anymore. And he just thinks everyone's too uptight. This is Stan. Uh, Stan looks like the kind of guy that would uh, call me Poppy when like we were working together, and I wouldn't know if it was an insult or a compliment. And so I would always kind of feel a slight amount of unease. Like he's someone who's being nice to me, but doesn't really mean it. This is Handy. This is like. It's certainly a homeless person. This is Gregory. He's wearing a mask, so he rules. Please, wear a mask, folks. This is Mr. Booba. He he looks like somebody that could do like a really good Donald Duck impression, but he does it way too often and at inappropriate times. Like, he greets strangers doing it, so everyone is just off-put by him. Like, it feels like a performance. Like, it's something he's doing to make people like him, and y you just can't reckon with that. This is Mr. Gordon. He'd have some amazing stories to tell you if, like, acid and weed hadn't just completely destroyed his long-term memory. This is Mrs. Lisburn. She takes her walks in the, in the local mall because she's terrified of the knockout game. These are Lightning and Zeke. They are two little people that you can bet on when they're wrestling for money. Uh, I'm not going to comment on that. I just want to say... These are very good, like, amateur wrestler costumes. Like, I have seen, uh, I'm not into wrestling, but just, you know, by by virtue of, of knowing people who do, I have seen a good amount of, like, indie wrestling content, and these people definitely look like they would fit right in. This is Alfred, a member of the local freak show. Uh, you might be think it's because of his physique, but it's actually just because he wears a top hat in the 21st century. This is Paris from The Freak Show. She's both the bearded lady and the fat lady. She is an absolute queen, and uh, unfortunately, because and unfortunately, the model viewer doesn't want to play nice with her because you only ever see her kind of posed on a couch. But yeah, absolute queen. You're living your best life, and I admire your confidence. This is Courtney, also from The Freak Show. She's a mermaid. She thinks that mermaid fandom was better in the 80s before all the you know fake mermaid fans joined because of Splash. This is Delilah. She's a conjoined twin, but again, uh, because her model wasn't meant to be viewed outside of a very specific locked off like tableau, it, she, she doesn't really play very nice with this, and you can't see her other sister, who is apparently unnamed. But something I learned embarrassingly late, si uh, Siamese twin is not a politically correct term, we should, you, which makes sense because, I mean, Siam isn't even like a place anymore. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a smart person, but yeah, I'm conjoined twin. But yeah, very cool, and honestly, I just feel like mentioning, like, uh, an interesting history of the freak, of, like, old carnival freak shows was a lot of people who had some sort of disability or, like, you know, or otherwise, like, performers in it, they really enjoyed, it was actually a positive for them because it let them, you know, live relatively independently, live with other people who were similarly uh, differently able, so they had accommodations and even had, like, other people that were like them that they could, you know, socialize with, as opposed to, like, just sitting in, like, uh, you know, like, like an asylum or, like, a convent or something so yeah again there it's one of those things that in modern context is very problematic but historically i you know it's it, it's a complicated thing and it's it's an interesting part of history especially somebody who considers themselves a fan of like a lot of like old americana and like you know american spiritualism stuff from like the 1800s and carnival artwork and stuff like it's one of those things i've just kind of had to make my peace with and this is drew the tattooed man Honestly, the, the idea that a guy with tattoos is freakish is hilarious, because, like, honestly, now, at this point, if you don't have tattoos, that's, like, a more unique and individualistic thing than having them. So, uh, I don't know if, you know, why would I pay to see you when, like, every other guy at the gas station in Daytona at, like, 11 o'clock at night looks like you? This is Castillo. He's the uh, mechanic for the town. He doesn't handle the customers as much because he's not as sociable, but if you need somebody to fix a car, you can't do better than this guy. And he's not even like the type of gearhead that like gets really mad about modern cars having computers in them and stuff. Like As far as he's concerned, he loves it. It's just more stuff to learn and more things to know how to do. This is Edgar. He wears capris and he doesn't give a fuck what you think about that. This is Gurney. He looks like the type of guy where I would make like a Dune reference about his name and he would just look at me like he wishes I didn't exist. And you know, honestly, I, I get that feeling sometimes too, buddy. This is Jerry. He he has a he looks like he has a nickname like Thrash or Doobie because he thinks Jerry is too gay. 
This is McGinnis. He's a construction worker, but the only tool he's carrying is a hatchet. So my headcanon for this guy is that he's like some kind of like season six Dexter serial killer. Like when the show had just completely gone down the shitter and people were just hate watching it. And his episode, he probably is like, like his dad gave him a hatchet before abandoning him. So now he murders people with it. Low tier care. This is Johnson. He's sick of people asking him if he's one of the wet bandits. This is a punching bag. Uh, due to how games work, yeah, this punching bag is technically an NPC. The game does not seem to know what to do with it. So, uh, just enjoy this very, you know, this very funny glitch of this, gra of this, <laughs> this, this, this punching bag that has social anxiety and will not come down. This is Officer Williams. The actual police officers make fun of him because he's just a security guard for the school, and it really hurts his feelings. When he's up all doing, when he's doing a night shift all by himself, he spends a lot of time fantasizing about getting to become a cop and, you know, murder people who upset him and get away with it. This is the geography teacher. He shows up late in the list because his class was one of the ones added in Bully Scholarship Edition, which was a 2008 re-release on the Wii and Xbox 360 and PS3 that added some new classes and mini games and unlockables and just a little more extra content. I have to say, he does not look like the fun type of geography teacher. He looks like the kind of geography teacher that thinks that people not being able to recognize wh what country on a map is called what is like some sort of sign of the times and like the decline of human civilization when in reality, arbitrarily memorizing spots on a map is, you know, just not a skill people need anymore now that we have cell phones. And that's partially why he feels so strongly about it. He's threatened because he realizes he devoted his life to something and now he's been, you know, basically rendered obsolete by a magic supercomputer that every person owns and keeps in their pocket. This is the music teacher from music class. If I was the type of person that used the word thick with two C's, I would describe her as that, but I don't because nobody likes that. Just just, just admit you like chubby people. There's nothing wrong with that. We're not going to judge you. And calling it a different word doesn't magically make it not that. So yeah, she's very cool, very relaxed. I love her colors. Um, Yeah, this looks like this looks like if you were a bullied kid, she's like your favorite teacher. She's always like super nice and will let you like hang out in her classroom before school doing homework and not getting picked on. These are elves? Um, nothing really special about them. I guess since this game in 2006, I might say, uh, you know, Elf came out just a couple years before this, and their costumes and the hat really looks like they're, uh, they're really, you know, really trying to capture that Elf steez. This is Santa Hobo. I know that the drunken mall Santa is like a beloved baby boomer institution, but uh, at this point, I'm just like, you have a problem. You should not be near children. This is Santa. The files just refer to it as Santa, so as far as I'm concerned, canonically, this is the real Santa Claus. That is another fun thing I like about Bully, even though it was targeted at teenagers, there's nothing in it about Santa not being real. I always just like it when people kind of just keep the kayfabe going, even when, like, everyone involved should be old enough to know better. Like, hell yeah, Santa's cool. Santa's real. I believe in Santa. This is a rat. Uh, they are listed as NPCs in the game's files, so... There you go. Um, I love rats. I've raised fancy rats like for pets for most of my adult life. I have a lot of affection for rats, and I gotta admit, these are very these are pretty cute rats. They're appropriately chubby. They got little pointy noses. Uh, if you look at if you get a really good look at them, it's funny because they're barely even animated. Their legs are just like three polygons that just kind of wiggle in place. And also, the game uses actual like rat noises for so i i'm these are very good rats i feel kind of bad that you can kill them and that i feel kind of bad that a part of the game is that you can uh that you can kill them and pick them up and like throw them at people as a weapon but you know that's just how people are it's funny you know when when the media got mad about gta 3 letting you kill prostitutes i was just rolling my eyes but you know when a game gives you the option to kill a rat i feel very bad uh I feel like that says a lot about me, and a lot about humanity in general. But, you know, I can't fix society, people. And lastly, because he's technically listed on the NPC list, there's Jimmy himself. There's Jimmy Hopkins himself, the protagonist of Bully. I, I switched into my school uniform here, just so you can kind of see his default behavior. 
Uh, Jimmy is great. He walks the tight line perfectly between being a little shit and also kind of, you know, being somebody who's nice and like somebody who you can root for. He's really dumb in a funny way, but also in a way where you can never tell if he's like fucking with somebody or if he genuinely does understand what they're talking about. Bully, I mean, Jimmy Hopkins rules. The game of Bully would not work if his character was was not as good as he is. So really good job. Uh, he totally holds up and I, you know... It even kind of looks like how I looked when I was a teenager in that brief time when I had a buzz cut. So you know what, Jimmy, Jimmy, you're you're a good boy, Jimmy. I like you a whole lot, and I'm glad I got to play as you for a whole game. And that's it. That is every single NPC and bully uh, reviewed, or I guess I should say more evaluated, uh, given impressions upon by me, sorting algorithms. I know this was a little different. It's very silly, but I had fun doing it. And I should go without saying, but bully is a really good game. If you're turned off by how like nihilistic and edgy and mean and unpleasant GTA 4 and 5 were, and, but in your longing for like some San Andreas silliness in your life, if you haven't played this game, you should totally totally play it if you have it totally holds up to revisiting it's a very comfy game especially as we're at the point now where summer turns into fall uh the game starts right around that point it just feels very comfy and autumn-y to have this wonderful little city to run around in and all these cool little doohickeys to play with and again to have a game where nobody dies uh and overall just nobody dies there's no guns you can just have fun and do what you like also also, I was able to make this, this video using SuperBod 3.0. It's a mod for Bully, which rules, and I would de definitely recommend anybody who's replaying it. You can control the whole thing with your controller as well as the keyboard, so it's very easy to use no matter how you like to play it. It lets you do everything from warp to locations. You can disable time, change the season. Uh, you can spawn in NPCs like I've been doing, give yourself weapons. You can even like convert people to... You can even like recruit any character in the game, give them weapons, and have your own fun little like NPC battle so yeah if you're really into the just fucking around and making your own fun aspect of open world games i cannot recommend super mod enough it makes this game so much more fun and overcomes the little bits of friction in it and you know if you're the type of person that gets mad about people who cheat or don't play games the way their creators intended you know you're allowed to play the game vanilla if you want nobody's forcing you to use it as always, thanks for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If not, please don't tell me. I don't want you to bum me out. <laughs> uh, and I will say one other thing. If you're mad that this video isn't running in HD, it's because my computer is garbage. And instead of complaining about it, do your part to fix that. I have uh, Go to patreon.com slash algorithms. Throw me a couple bucks. I'd love to get a non-potato so I could record better games and newer games and just in general be higher quality and not take multiple hours just to equalize the audio after I finish recording it. Uh, that was a little mean. I'm sorry. I should end on a positive note. You know, thank you for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I hope uh, I hope the month of September is better for us than the last month was. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, consider showing it to other pe to some people you know who might enjoy it. And you know, just. Don't be a bully. And uh, one other thing, the soundtrack to this game is amazing. Even if you don't play it, look it up on Spotify or YouTube or something. Look it up on YouTube or something. It's done by Sean Lee, who's this really good, like, bug musician. Uh, if you ever played Tales from the Borderlands, the opening music from the second act was done was also done by him. And he just gives it like, this really kind of good, whimsical feeling. Like, he's he's kind of like if he's like if uh, Danny Elfman was on Beta Blockers, so he's not quite as manic, but still has that kind of whimsy and comfort to it. Again, total recommend.